Hey guys, Stephanie here, all things life and fitness. Today's video is about the field training program and we are in the middle of our law enforcement series. So I have John here who's gonna explain it to us. Yeah, I um, noticed you raised your chair. You wanna be at equal level, is that why? Yeah. All right. All right, John, tell us what exactly is FTO? So you've been hired, you've completed the academy, and now you're onto your department and it's day one, what is it? That's when you start the field training program or we call it FTO for field training officer. And that's where you basically start your on the job training. Can you tell us a little bit about your first day on FTO? Yeah. so. The FTO program is very nerve wracking because now it's like someone looking over your shoulder, watching your every move, grading you at the end of the day. So it's my very first day. We're walking out to the car and I get a text from you. And it was all it was was a picture of a positive pregnancy test. <laughs> no explanation. No words. I like pull up my phone and look at it. And I was like, wait, <laughs> what? I was looking at it. And my FTO is like, what's up, dude? I'm like, I think we're having another baby. I was like, look at this. And I show him that's all it was. No explanation, no words, no nothing. I'm like, oh, well, I'm off. Well, if I wasn't nervous enough, now I'm going to start out the day with like, oh, I'm a dad again <laughs> for the fourth time. Well, it wasn't your first rodeo, so. Yeah, I think she was just, she, you were mad. Were it was you? unexpected. Yeah. We we're on birth control. We we're like, oh, let's wait. Let's adopt instead. We were done. Because we just okay. went through the. We just finished the, whatever it's called, the foster to adopt program. Yeah. So like, yes, let's adopt and then we'll have another kid. And then I'm starting this brand new job and like, oh, BT dub, getting a baby. I mean, I just added to your stress level there. No. Yeah. So to answer your question though, what is the FTO program? So it's basically on the job training. Just like, I mean, I knew you were a server for a while, but every time you went to a new restaurant, you got trained, right? Yep. And what did that kind of look like? Uh, the first portion was like me following someone around, shadowing them, seeing what they do. And then they kind of turned around and they followed me around and made sure I did everything properly. The FTO program for police work is basically the same thing. Just like any other job, it's on the job training. And you have a trainer that we call the FTO. And then you have the trainee, obviously, the new person who is followed and shadowed by the FTO to make sure they're being lawful, make sure they're within policy, and make sure they're being safe. And so those are three big things. So basically the FTO just looks over your shoulder for the day and does the same thing like when you're at the restaurant, they just follow you around and make sure that you're doing the job correctly and teaching you how to do it as you go. Because pretty much like any other job, learning on the job is gonna be way more than you can learn in any classroom. All right, so what can a trainee expect during the program? So as far as just the program goes, I mean, each, de each department's gonna have their own little twist and tweaks. But basically it's three to four, possibly even five phases, as we call it, each phase typically being about a month long. And you're supposed to progress as you go through those phases. And each phase you'll get a different FTO, but just real briefly, basically phase one, it's supposed to be like 20% doing, 80% asking, because you don't know what you're doing. And by the time you get to your last phase, it should be 80, 90% doing, and only you know, 10, 20% questions, meaning, as the trainee, I'm doing it all. I can handle the case, the investigation, the report, all of that on my own without the assistance of the FTO. As it should be, when you first start, you don't know what you're doing. So you're going to have a lot more questions. So I have a question. Uh -oh. During this FTO phase, say the trainee is making some not great decisions. At what point or is there a point where the FTO can then step in and completely take over? I guess we'll talk a little bit when like the job of the FTO, but to answer your question, it depends on the call. So if I'm just at like a theft at CVS, for example, and the trainee just can't even get words out of his mouth and struggling, I might just let him struggle through, or the FTO might just let him struggle through the entire thing because there's no real urgency and they should be able to figure out some simple crimes. But if the serious of the crime is to a level where people are in danger and decisions need to be made really fast, the FTO most likely will step in. Just like even when there's no trainee, if something is really popping off and something critical is happening, even typically, you know, all the officers that are there, no one's on training, everyone's been there for a while. 
the most confident like senior officer or the officer that's been through this type of scenario the most will probably step up and kind of take command of that scene if there's maybe a SWAT guy on the on the call maybe they take up because it's a tactical deal maybe if it's a former detective that's back to patrol and it's like a sex crimes and they know what's best then they'll t- kind of take command so or take charge at least but it really depends on the call but if it's crazy serious yeah the FTO or the trainee probably probably gets pushed to the back a little bit good to know yeah that makes me feel good yeah Real quick, funny story. We had an in-progress burglary where there was a dude in the building and I had a trainee and I had in and out and a like monster energy drink like an hour prior and we get on scene and all of a sudden my stomach just like turned sideways so fast where I look at my part and I'm like, dude, if I don't get to quick stop right there real quick, I'm literally going to poop in my pants. And he's like, are you serious? I'm like, bro you stay with the trainee stay with him and i started to walk and couldn't make it and had to stop on the construction site porter potty oh literally in the middle of a call yeah and this oh is my when gosh. you had a trainee <laughs> yeah. oh god it was so bad so bad <laughs> that's gross yeah so you're an fto yep. tell us exactly what your job is when you have a trainee what is the job of an fto yeah so the job of the fto like per our policy not broken down each step pretty much generally The job of the FTO is to one, make sure the trainee and those involved stay safe. Two, to make sure that they stay lawful, that we're not breaking laws. And three, to make sure that we're still within policy. So basically so that he's not doing anything illegal, can't get us sued, and he's not gonna get anyone hurt. Those are the three main things. And then we also evaluate the trainee at the end of every single shift, write out every call they went to, grade them how they did it, they passed, they failed, and then give them kind of grades for the day. Have you ever failed it? failed a trainee i haven't trainees fail because it's not easy and some get extended some will because they invest a lot of money so they might extend you instead of just fail you but trainees have failed at our department and i've never failed one i've given one poor grades for you know one day you might be on one call and make a mistake and it's like a heinous mistake like officer safety type stuff and you might get rated a one for the day but that doesn't mean the day before you weren't you know at an acceptable level or the day after you're gonna be fine It's just that day you made a terrible mistake and we have to grade them. Are there different types of FTOs? (laughs) Absolutely. Are there different types of bosses and different types of trainers and all that, right? Yes. What kind of FTO are you? So I put it this way. When I played college football, I'd run a route, I'd break the guy off, I'd be wide open, quarterback would throw it to me and I'd drop it, right? I'd come off to the sideline and the coach would just be yelling and screaming in my face, how could you drop that ball? And I was just like, yeah, I'm sorry, coach. I didn't, I forgot I'm supposed to catch it, right? <laughs> so like yelling for no reason to me just doesn't make sense. So I'm more of a laid back. I just want to, I want to help teach you how to be an officer the way I like to be an officer. Now, I remember when you were going through FTO, you had a couple that you loved and that were really helpful. And then you had a couple that were terrible. Oh my gosh. Tell us about those. Well, well, not that one. Not terrible. I only had one and I hated him and now he's my friend. So <laughs> <laughs> we love him now. He no, did a yell. So he just was mean. He just a mean. Ryan, you were mean. Maybe okay? he deserved it. Not, you know who I'm talking about. The father of our puppy. He was mean. <laughs> <laughs> the human father of our yeah. puppy yeah. fur parent. They know what I'm talking about. But. Each FTO is different and he actually, I mean, I was only with him for like two shifts, but there's just some like old school, not necessarily yell, but like get upset, not cut you any slack. Cutthroat. Yeah, very cutthroat and not very like, oh, not no nurturing or whatever. And that's fine because I I was only with him, Ryan, for two shifts and I still remember one of the shifts on a car stop and he was like, basically ripped me a new one for the way I handled the car stop. And I still remember that lesson. So there's a place for it. It was just like, oh man, dude, if I was with him for a month, oh. Ugh. He would be a good RTO in the academy. Oh yeah, he's one of my best friends now at the PD. I mean, so he's a it's good just guy. it's just funny. And so all my other FTOs were like complete opposite. All right, John, give us some good tips for a trainee that's about to start FTO. First, I would say is the biggest thing is your attitude, and so it's just simply a being coachable, having a willingness to learn knowing you're going to make mistakes and just keeping a positive attitude through that whole process. No matter if you have a cutthroat FTO who you can't stand, or you have someone that's just like playing almost as your friend and like, Hey, you're doing great. No matter what the spectrum, have a good attitude. That's I'm here to learn and I want to get better because it's going to take me forever to learn all the ins and outs of this job. Are there any good questions that a trainee 
can ask their FTO, whether it be day one or throughout the process? So that's just as a trainee, hopefully you're good enough to read your FTO and know what you can and can't ask. A good FTO should at the beginning of your, especially if you're, well, even if you're a lateral or you're brand new out of the academy, your FTO, a good FTO, or if you are an FTO, I would recommend that you give your trainees a like list of expectations. Here's what I expect from you. Here's what you can expect from me. Whether you're going to be like old school or whatever, like your expectation be like, look, don't talk to me unless I talk to you. Don't ask, I, don't ask questions. Just figure it out on your own. If you mess up, I'll instruct you, right? Maybe the FTO is the complete opposite. So as the trainee, you just kind of read that. If they don't give you that list, well, just figure it out as you go. But you're spending hours and hours a day in the same car, one foot from this person. So if you can't read them, then maybe you're in the wrong job. That blows my mind. I think that an FTO should be like, look, no question is a stupid question, and I'm here to answer all of them. Well, that's probably a lot of FTOs. I know that's how I do it, but it just depends. There's just like different expectations from different FTOs. Just like different I said, Ryan is a completely different FTO than I am, but we both have something to give. We both have something to teach, and there are different lessons that come out of both of it. Goodness. All right, so if you have any questions about the FTO or the training process in general, leave them in the comments below, and John will be sure to answer them. Uh, also, we're going to do a Q&A video at the end of this series where we're going to answer all of the questions that have been asked throughout this series. Uh, and so we have one more video in the series left, right? Plus the questions, right? Plus the Q&A okay. video. Yeah. So thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah. Shoot me any questions. The training part of being a police officer, those like the application to, you know, roughly you can be in training for the Academy and FTO for a year, you know, 10 months to a year. It's no joke because mistakes you make at a restaurant, you just comp them them real, right? Mistakes you make as a police officer could end up costing your job, your life, somebody else their life, could end up getting you sued, the department sued. There's just so many things that could go wrong. The stakes are higher, so they spend so much time training, and then it goes, even after you finish the uh, process, it continues. So if you have what? questions, yes, yeah, send them to me. Lifelong training. Yeah. Like All being right. married. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, All right, sign off. Bye. What? Well, there's, that's...